not only can you pass lambdas to assertions in assert all, you can actually pass lambdas into any assertions for the statement, for the message that the, the test displays if the test were to fail. What do I mean by that? Now, take a look at this message that we show when a test fails. This particular thing, assert equals, I'm running a particular test, and then I'm putting this message over here, which says, hey, JUnit, if this test were to fail, show that message, right? When is that message gonna be even applicable? The message is gonna be applicable when the test fails. If creating that message involves consuming some resources, right? So let's say it's a bit expensive to create that string message to show, then it's kind of counterproductive to create that message every time for every test, even if the test completely succeeds and there's no need to show that message, right? Let me give you an example. Let's say you're doing a bunch of uh, computations here. Let's say if you're uh, in expected equals minus two, int actual equals this. I'm kind of computing this message so that I can provide a more detailed message. It doesn't make sense in this context because JUnit is gonna give you that anyway. But let's say, let's go with me here. Let's say I do this expected and then actual should return some expected but returned actual all right let's say this is my uh, this is my test this is what i'm trying to do now every time this test runs this string is being created, right? So there is a string should return sum and expected is appended to it and then but returned is appended to it and then actual is appended to it. There are optimiz optimizations there, but let's assume for the sake of this discussion that this is uh, an expensive piece of string to compute, right? This string is gonna get computed when this class runs no matter whether the test passes or fails, because this is getting computed even before the value is being compared. This string is being passed to the assert equals method. The assert equals method gets these three arguments and then it asserts and then uses the string only when uh, the assertion is failed. So you are computing it irrespective of whether the test passes or fails. Now, what if this is an expensive piece of string to calculate? What if that needs to be deferred? What if you want to ca calculate this lazily? Well, guess what? You can create a lambda and pass it over here. The lambda is a supplier, so basically it's something that returns a single value. As long as you pass in a lambda which returns a string, what JNet is going to do is it's going to say, hey, I, I know you haven't given me a string, but you've given me a method to execute, which is going to give me a string. I'm fine with that. I'm only going to execute that method if this test were to fail. If the test passes, I'm not gonna execute that method. So guess what? This string computation, if you put it inside a Lambda, it's not gonna get called, the computation is not gonna happen until and unless the test fails. Right, so it's very simple to change this. All I need to do is convert this to a Lambda. All right, now this is going to be a function that, that uh, assert equals is gonna take, keep it with it, and it's gonna execute. It promises to execute that function only when the test fails. Right? Small optimization, but this is also something that uh, JUnit can do for you, and that's something that's important to remember when you have when you're dealing with uh, when you're dealing with stuff that is a little bit complicated to calculate. You don't want to do that every time.